Oh, can you believe it? 1114 guys is closer to hitting the rift than I am to escaping plat one. And we don't have released the champions and items getting buffed, nerfed, and adjusted. And the jizz is here like always to fill you in on all the details. Now comment of the day, and no, this is not a jizz burner account, I'm not Kevin Duran. And Rainy says, it's funny how I'm master and still learning something valuable from these videos. Smiley face. Oh, that makes me so happy. Now Rainy, and to all of you watching, if you want this elite content on another level, then make sure to head on over to the Game Week website, gameweep.com, for that challenger tier information. Videos, courses, guides, TikToks, we've got it all. We don't actually have TikToks, but yeah. Sign up, links in the description and comment section. All right, so let's get into the details of the 11-14 changes, guys. And we're going to start with the champion buffs here. And let me just say that overall, this patch looks pretty good. And that might be because Mark Yetter is no longer making the changes. But anyway, let's talk about the eight champions that are getting buffed next patch. Now, we're going to start in the top lane and talk about these champions. And one champion who you love to hate in the top lane is getting improved next patch. And this is Darius. And the reason being is because the new Stry Breaker, because it doesn't have a dash anymore, is really hurting Darius. You can get kited very easily, and it's as if you are all too dependent on the Stry Breaker dash to be relevant in this meta. Now, I know lots of people like to ignore it as well, but Darius has been nerfed this season too, which has hurt his laning phase and carry potential, so this buff does seem completely warranted. Now, another top laner who abused Stry Breaker back in the day, so a patch ago, is getting buffed at 11.14 too, and this is Garen. So all of you Beybladers out there should be very happy, and Garen is in the same boat as Darius. Because you don't have an innate dash in your kit, it's very hard to make work without a dash in your items, especially in this meta where there is still so much mobility, and in this meta with Shirelia's supports being strong and Peeling being pretty good overall. Now the last top laner getting a bit of love for 11-14 guys is Elawi, and I know lots of people hate playing against Elawi, but it is true, especially in higher elos, Elawi is just kind of struggling. Even if you do go Divine Sundra, you know with how broken that item is, and you might get Stereo's Cage, you might get Death Stance in there as well, you are just underperforming compared to everyone else. With a 35% win rate and Master and Above, like can anyone really complain about this? Now this might make her OP in low elo, but the reason she's OP in low elo guys isn't because of the champion, it's simply because people don't know how to play against Delawi. So what I'm really trying to say is, stop headbutting her. So those are the three top lane champions getting buffed next patch, guys. Now let's talk about the mid laners. And yeah, that was it. So let's go to the bottom lane, and there are two champions here getting improved. Now, one of them is Seraphine, and a buff sounds all right because Seraphine is worse off than what she was at the start of the season, but to be honest, like, I don't even know where you're meant to play Seraphine anymore. Is she a mid laner? Is she an AP carry bot laner? Is she a support? Like, what is she? Maybe she's a jungler in 11-14, who knows? So hopefully this buff actually sorts out Seraphine's identity crisis, but maybe you guys are playing her in different roles. Who knows? And the only other bot laner getting buff next patch, guys, it is another support, and this is Tarek. And for me, I actually love to see this because for Tarek, like who on earth as a support wants to buy a tier just so you don't have mana problems? Like whatever tank your support has to do this. Does a Nautilus have to buy a tier? Does a Leona have to buy a tier? No, of course not. So hopefully this addresses Tarek's mana issues and actually brings him back to life. Now the last three champions getting buffed for 1114 reside in the jungle. And the first one I mentioned in a video a couple of days ago talking about underrated champions, and this is Graze. And for Graze to be getting another buff, I think it's very risky by Riot. To be honest, Riot have always loved Graze, so if you want a jungler, just pick him. He's going to be good 99% of the time, and hopefully this buff will help you clear Krugs, Walls, Raptors a little bit better, and give you that clear speed you kind of need at the moment to keep up in the jungle meta. But even if Riot give you damage or something else, or whatever the buff really is, it's still going to be a better patch, of course. In before a 0.0180 per level buff. Now next jungler in 11.14 getting a bit of help is Rek'Sai. Now why is Rek'Sai bad? Well this patch, she isn't doing so well because Prowler's Claw has been nerfed, right? So you can no longer dash to a minion, to a jungle camp. And this means that in terms of kill potential and playmaking potential, there is just less of it on the map for you. And because you do like to dive onto the enemy backline, this was one way you could do it. You could dash to a minion, you could dash to a jungle camp. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but you could. And this has seen Rek'Sai's win rate decrease across the board, so this buff coming up seems completely justified here. Now the last champion getting buffed for 11.13 is Ivern. And after a few nerfs recently to Ivern himself and his items, you know, like I can't remember the last time I saw an Ivern running around all happy. It's been pretty sad. It also does and help when Serpent's Fang is in the game, which is an item that just completely cucks Ivan. So again, whatever this buff will be, good job right. It seems warranted. Now, as we get into these champion nerfs, guys, if you're enjoying these patch updates, what Riot are bringing us, then make sure you let us know by leaving a like down below. And coming in next, yes, we have the seven champions getting nerfed. Seven, that's right. Now, we're going to start in the mid lane because there are actually mid laners getting nerfed here, and there are four of them. So we're going to start with Akali. Now, Akali has recently been picked so much, and her ban rate is also up this patch just because pros are playing her, and I think 
people are starting to realize just how good she really is. With Hexet Rocket Belt or Rift Maker with Sorcerer Shoes with Zonyas, you do so much damage, but what makes it really hard is that it's too easy to get out of that weak early game into level 6, into your major items, and just carry. You can go Fleet Footwork, you can go D Shield, you can go Second Wind, you just sustain all of that early poke and harass, even if you miss every single CS, you're still going to be way too useful. So again, another thumbs up to the balance team. This is good. In before I get flamed by every COVID-19 fan in the comments. Now, another champion who's been really overperforming this patch was actually the number one champion in our top 20 champions video for 11-14, and this is Malzahar. Now, why is Malzahar super broken at the moment? Well, it's not like he's super broken, it's just that you can't really beat him. He can just obnoxiously clear waves. He's got that passive, which makes him hard to kill and gank. He's got a great mythic in Lee Andrew's Anguish. He also does a ridiculous amount of damage with the burn from Anguish because he already has a burn in his kit. And yeah, he might be kind of a mobile, but again, his passive keeps him safe. And because he has such insane wave clear, it's like the actual gank window to gank him is a lot smaller compared to other mid laners. I also think that just pressing R to win might be a little unhealthy, but yes, Malzahar is getting nerfed and probably rightly so. And by the way, guys, any thoughts on any of these changes? And if you think these champions should have been nerfed or a different champion should have been nerfed, let me know in the comments. Now, the second to last mid lane we have to talk about is Nocturne. Now, why is Nocturne getting nerfed? Well, it's quite simple. He is the most broken champion in the game. And why? Well, because of the new stride breaker. Nocturne, you don't need a dash because you have a dash in your ultimate, right? So when you jump on someone's head and you apply 90% slow, yeah, really healthy. Good job, right? But what's funny is that Ryder have actually specified here that they're targeting the lane sustain for Nocturne. But to be fair, it's kind of hard to change his ultimate, I guess. So that paranoia stride break combo is still going to be there. But yeah, the lane sustain, this kind of makes sense because one of Nocturne's greatest strengths is of course sustaining through lane because you're passive and you just perma wave clear. It's like you have a free laning phase because no one can match you and it's kind of pointless just wasting cooldowns on you because yeah, you just heal it all back up. So you get to level six for free, you get to your stride breaker spike for free and it's then just very hard to play against, generally speaking. So will this bring Nocturne down a peg? We'll have to see. Now the last mid laner getting nerfed in 11-14 is Ziggs. Now Ziggs, in my opinion, is so much better as an AP carry bot laner, but if you do play him in the mid lane anywhere, and I kind of feel sorry for Ziggs mains because it's like you've just had a patch where you've been good for the first time in ages, and now someone from the right balance team has had a bit of a hard game against the Ziggs in gold or plat elo. Oh, big deal. So to be honest, I'm rooting for you Ziggs fans. Hopefully this nerf isn't too big. Now let's head to the jungle guys and talk about two champions on the chopping block for 11-14, and this will please a lot of you. One of them is Shaco. And for Shaco getting nerfed, I mean, I don't really play the game that much anymore. It still makes me a little sad and just confirms, yeah, I'm never playing this game again. But Riot haven't actually specified whether it's AD or AP. So who knows what's in store here, but I'm guessing it's going to be for AD Shaco because AD Shaco is Stride Breaker at the moment because again, you have an innate dash in your kit. It's just way too hard to play against. It's as simple as that. Now, the other jungler getting nerfed is like Shaco, a Halo Blades abuser. And this is Zinzao, who to be honest, is the number one jungler at the moment. You're seeing him in pro play. You're seeing him all over the place, even banned now in some elotes because he's so broken, and I'm not exactly sure what Riot will nerf here. His ganking potential is kind of ridiculous because he can W you from cross map and then jump on you with his E. It's like impossible to lose 1v1s, your sustain is ridiculous, and your ultimate protects you for like 5 seconds, you can't take any damage. So maybe it's that actually after just saying it. But yes, you guys will have to stay tuned for tomorrow to find out exactly what it is, and the last champion getting nerfed for 11-14 guys resides in the bottom lane, and this is Karma. Now Karma, I'm kind of surprised by this. Yes, she is picked in higher elos and in pro play, but even in those elos, it's not like she's overperforming in solo queue, right? And the reason is because playing Karma, playing these ranged champions, it is the hardest thing in the game for me. Like spacing, staying at range, keeping like Wukong, Camille, you know, any melee champion in the game, right? You're probably going to get hit by something in a team fight. And most of the time, this can kill you. Even if it's just a stride breaker, some sort of CC, some sort of skill shot. And when you do use your abilities to empower your teammate, it's like you're putting your faith in them. And in solo queue, that is very treacherous indeed. But yeah, okay, you might be right. Like objectively speaking, Karma or Shirelli's is pretty good right now. I just hope it's not too much of an nerf because I think that would be too unfair to those Karma mains out there. Now the four champion adjustments coming in next guys and it is the Jizz's last running reminder to adjust your game by signing up to the Game Week website at GameWeek.com. We have everything you need right like champion courses, champion guides, role guides, even our top tier players and coaches talk about micro, macro, everything you will ever need for Summoner's Rift is on there. So get signed up to get your climb started this season. Link, links down below. Now the adjustments coming in. There are four of these.
abilities, okay? So the first is coming to Aurelia. And Ryan have specified here, okay, everyone calm down. I know everyone's panicking right now. But Ryan has specified that they're adjusting her for pro play. But these Aurelia changes and we'll show you these tomorrow in full detail and go through them all are kind of insane to be honest. Like I don't even think she'll be a champion after this because some of her kit, which really makes her Aurelia, is actually getting like just straight up deleted and replaced by something that isn't as good. So this is going to be very interesting tomorrow to hear your guys' feedback. And another champion getting adjusted in terms of the pro scene is Lilia. And Lilia, funnily enough, even though she has like a 45% winner in a solo queue, is actually still getting picked in pro play. You know, she brings so much utility to her team because of that ultimate. It's just that, yeah, you're not getting too many ultimates off and there are just better junglers at the moment. So even if it is for pro play, it's still going to be good for solo queue. So no big deal there. It kind of seems legit. And the last two champions getting adjusted, guys, for next patch are Dr. Mundo in terms of the top and jungle and then Tom Kench in terms of support and top. Now, Tom Kench, after the rework, you might even say he's the worst champion in the game. And to be honest, you'd have a heck of a good point. The wide mouth toad after the rework is completely underperforming. So whatever I do here, hopefully it will improve that terrible win rate at the moment. And for Dr. Mundo, it's actually good to hear the rider thinking about Dr. Mundo in the jungle because they try to push him out of it into the top lane. But bringing jungle Mundo back actually makes me happy because there are people out there who play this. And because Mundo has been around for so long, like you're just taking something out of the game that you don't really need to. So I'm all for bringing jungle Mundo back in the top change as well. Like there's nothing to really complain about it until tomorrow anyway. Now the last change of the patch guys is to an item and there's only one item change here and this is the dead man's plate and what's coming is a system buff to dead man's. Now it did get changed last patch so in terms of the movement speed you're getting less of it and for champions like Darius, for champions like Skana, for champions like Udyr, champions who relied on the movement speed and the tankiness it gave were worse off. So seeing this buffed again honestly it's just another one that kind of seems justified because you know the item isn't that broken if at all. So those are the listed changes coming for 1114 guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Overall I think this is pretty good. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss tomorrow's video where I will be breaking down all of these changes and actually detailing them like exactly what they are. So hit that sub button and until then this has been the Jizz. Bye!